Hello everybody, this is Pam Coey. Uh, thank you for subscribing to my YouTube channel. I, um, I really appreciate your comments and the fact that uh, people are interested in what I'm doing in my studio. I, I tend to work in four mediums and I've really mostly been documenting my cold wax and oil. Uh, in the future I hope to uh, get some videos of my encaustic monotype, encaustic and mixed media. But for now, um, this is the medium I'm focusing on, and I'm teaching a lot of workshops in this medium, and I absolutely love it. I just love the consistency of cold wax medium and oils. It's this wonderful buttery consistency, but you can also push it into a more liquid um, way to paint with it. So I've just been having a lot of fun experimenting. And for those of you who've been following me on this channel, um, there have been a lot of videos that have been about this particular painting behind me. Uh, videos 17 through 20, 25 and 26, and this will be the final video about this painting, and it's video 29. Uh, the reason that I'm going to be talking about it now is because it's soon to be shipped off, and I wanted to talk about the final things that I did as you'll notice from the last video, which was number 26, I was in the process of dirtying up the surface with graphite powder. And um, there's been a lot that happened between that stage and, and this final stage. I didn't take a whole lot of photos. I didn't take a lot of videos. Um, however, I still wanted to talk to you about kind of what happened and why I did what I did. Um, I had to, I needed time to really think about it, but as you saw, I had scored the surface in this diamond pattern. I was trying to introduce the potential or possibility for introducing order over chaos. And it's something about my work that I've noticed I kind of need. I like to start with the free form, you know, childlike way of not worrying, not caring about what's down first, just aim for all kinds of different things. But at some point, um, when it comes time to uh, make sense of all this, I find that introducing a pattern, it doesn't have to be an all over pattern, but in this particular case, um, it actually turned out to be that. Um, you know, I welcome that as well, but it's, it's just one of many ways that I, I try to um, make sense of what I've done. So in this video, I'll be talking about um, how I developed this painting, I went from, in the previous video you saw, I had um, a lot of curvilinear shapes, and now you see a lot of rectilinear shapes. And between those rectilinear shapes, which are diamond shaped, you'll see that I've saved some of the curvilinear. However, they have been edited out greatly, and that's what I want to talk about. Thank you for watching. This painting is a diptych. Uh, each panel is 48 by 48, so the combined size is 48 tall by 96 wide. And I didn't really intend for this to be a diptych from the very start. I started it that way, but I was always open to it becoming two separate paintings if, if that were the way I wanted to go. But in this case, I just let it kind of be what it wanted to be. So I'm gonna just come in closer so that you can see some of the finer details. And then you can see that there is some indigo. I used uh, quite a bit of indigo. Um, after I developed my value pattern with black and white, I stayed black and white for a long time. And then I just felt like, well, you know, a little bit of color is nice. And so as you can see these diamond patterns, they set up a rhythm across the entire painting. And my paintings, I think, tend to be part drawing and part painting. I think the drawing is probably evident in every stage, every layer. I just love to incorporate that part of me, that need to be kind of reckless <laughs> and playful. Um, down here in this lower left corner, there's a lot of graphite marks, and you can also see where the marks have been incised. We move over and then you can see some areas where I've actually masked in certain shapes like this four leaf clover and a little rectilinear shape. So you might ask, where do these marks come from and what do they mean to me? Is there some personal connection? A lot of times I hear people say in workshops, well, 
I love marks, but I have a hard time making them because they just don't feel personal to me. They feel contrived or I don't know. They, uh, they just feel a little uncomfortable. So what I like to do is have people really um, exploit that sort of mark making exercise by playing a lot, you know, with your sketchbook or on large paper on the floor with odd shaped tools. I think the point of it is, in my opinion anyways, it's really hard to make a mark that didn't come from somewhere in your past. So in my case, I do love circles. You'll see a lot of circles and dots. And I think I may have traced that back to some place in my heritage, which my mother was Japanese. And I recently got a book of Japanese kimono patterns. And when I saw the book and leafed through all the different images, I just could not believe how much pattern there was. Simple patterns, complex patterns. Um, you know, there's just a lot um, of information that I now can use in my own work as I look through the book and um, incorporate some of these ideas and things that are part of me into my work. So again, this painting was largely black and white. And what I did, I'm gonna step back here now after all these close-ups. Um, I did develop the uh, diamond pattern, as you can see. A big part of what happened between the last video and this one is a lot of editing. And I know that that can be difficult because we fall in love with areas that we love and we want to keep. But at some point we realize that we can't keep it all. And so what I did in this case was I knew that I wanted to keep this sort of black and white um, pattern going. I did stick with that very simplified palette for a long time. And when I decided which tiles would be white and which would be black, it, or let's say I really only went over with the white and I left the, the chaotic underpainting as being left alone. So in other words, I edited out all those areas where you see the white tiles or the white diamonds. What that forced me to do was, in a random way, um, even though there were some areas that I really did love that got covered up, it didn't really matter because I had to lose them for the sake of the whole painting. And so I think that that, I hope you see that that is sort of what has happened here. Um, it set up a pattern, it set up a movement that I just couldn't have had any other way. Um, and of course there are many ways to solve problems in, in your paintings and I'm sure you all have your own ways that are very personal to you. But for me, um, I think the way this turned out was not something I anticipated because I never know where I'm going. I just found my way. But I do see that the mark making is meaningful to me in that even though I did introduce this highly rectilinear uh, pattern over the, the underpainting of curvilinear, I brought back a lot of drawing that has curves in it, but not too much. You know, you always want to have a dominance of one type of line over the other. So when I made marks like this over here, just drawing with oil pastels, um, sometimes my neo pastels, or um, really just about any type of dry marking tool. Um, it gave me that ability to introduce uh, back some of that curvilinear and some other tiny patterns that are not as notable until you get up close. So when you get up close, you can see that I did use masking with my cold wax medium to bring, bring back over those white painted diamonds, um, other areas of interest. So in other words, I covered things up, I scraped back, and then I drew back into these areas. And sometimes, like in this area, I did have these dots, but I'm never content with, you know, things that look overly perfect. So I do try to then, if I ever find myself doing something that looks a little bit too perfect, I very quickly <laughs> remedy the situation and distress the surface. Uh, that just tends to be the way that I like to work. I think that probably has more to do with the fact that I don't want perfection in my paintings with everything being super straight and super perfect because I myself am not perfect. <laughs> I think that it's just a way of expressing that feeling of time and you know, what is the lifetime like? What, what do we experience in our lifetime that we can transport into our art? 
Um, in my case, I feel like, you know, uh, looking back on my life, there are many things that uh, inform the surface here, the scraping back, um, the feeling of a life, and the feeling of time that's passed, and, you know, life has struggles, life has ups and downs. And I think that my work, or I hope that my work, also has a bit of that information in it as well. So thank you very much for taking a look at this now finished painting. I'm calling it Diamonds in the Rough. Um, and I will be just finishing it up with a final coat of cold wax medium, letting it dry, and then buffing it perhaps two layers. And that's how I'll finish this painting. Thank you all very much. Bye-bye.